Now recently, Coin Bureau put out a video about Cardano, a really big overview video. I think it's been about a year since Guy had done a previous video covering Cardano and the whole ecosystem. Now, when this video came out, I did see on Twitter a little bit, uh, people a little bit upset with some of the things that Guy had said because they weren't quite accurate. And I'm gonna do a reaction video and correct some of the discrepancies around what was said to try and set the record straight. So let's go through this and we can have a look at exactly what's going on with this particular video. So this is a video, I'll put links down below if you haven't seen it yet, but if you're just watching along here, you'll be more than well informed about what's going on and the coverage in general. I, I just skipped the intro and the Cardano explainer video about what is Cardano, et cetera. So um, well, I know most of you guys that are watching this channel do understand the intricacies and everything around Cardano. So we don't need to go through those aspects, but let's go through some of these updates that Guy talks about. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it's been over a year since we last covered Cardano, and it's safe to say that a lot has happened since then. Shortly after our last video went live, IOG announced the release of a toolkit to help developers create sidechains for Cardano. Note, this is part of Cardano's scaling roadmap. Yeah, and uh, uh, I think, uh, most people now know with Midnight coming about, uh, the whole sidechain development is doing is being built with Substrate, uh, the modules from Polkadot. So it's super interesting what is going on there in regards to the scaling and the development of those sidechains. And this allows companies, uh, applications to build those sidechains so they can scale up their dApps and, and use Polkadot architecture there to modularly create those side chains and then use Cardano as the main chain for those transactions. So super interesting and uh, yep, that, that's a, a really good update from the Cardano ecosystem. A couple of weeks later, Cardano reported what was apparently its first ever outage, though this is up for debate. For reference, more than half of Cardano's nodes went offline, resulting in degraded performance on the blockchain. Thankfully, the issue was quickly addressed. Okay, so uh, to, to clarify that, uh, I, I like how he preference that it's up for debate, and it kind of is. Now, the blockchain never went offline. So there were a certain amount of pools that did degrade because they uh, had a certain update and it needed to be corrected. Our pool, for example, we didn't update to that just yet. And as a result, our pool was perfectly fine, continuously minted blocks. So the transactions and people using the decks and everything continue to work perfectly fine. Just a couple of pools out there just weren't producing those blocks as they should. So when you see a headline like this outage, you expect something like Solana completely out for hours on end. It wasn't completely out blocks were still being minted and the chain was still working as expected. So let's continue from there. The news seems to have been overshadowed by the launch of Cardano's Jed stablecoin shortly afterwards. For those unfamiliar, Jed is a decentralized stablecoin analogous to MakerDAO on Ethereum. Its market cap has grown to 25 million over the last year, according to DeFi Llama. Then in February, the Cardano blockchain underwent the Valentine upgrade, which introduced more functionalities for developers to leverage when building dApps. The Cardano Foundation also hired a new COO and CLO, that is Chief Legal Officer. You'll see why that's significant a little later on. Then in March, IOG made a similar move by hiring a new CEO for Midnight, a privacy-focused sidechain for Cardano that's currently in development. And as a cherry on top, Cardano got another technical upgrade of sorts, the first Hydra head launched on the mainnet. It seems it will take time to fully roll out. Okay, so I have to agree with Guy's sentiment there with Hydra taking time to roll out. It's, and a lot of people think Hydra will speed up Cardano dramatically and be the end all solution to scaling and make Cardano super fast. Uh, but it works as a state channel, kind of like the Lightning Network, where it's a peer to peer transactions uh, that are faster. And it's not exactly the Cardano transactions uh, on L1 being faster itself. It's between a dApp and a peer. So it might be between two DEXs, for example, that are that is faster. And 
a lot of people think that everything will be faster. It won't be. Uh, certain aspects of it will be faster based on how the dApps integrate Hydra. So Hydra isn't a be-all, end-all solution for scaling for Cardano. There's a lot of other ways to scale. The biggest one that I think is going to be good for scaling is uh, Pi Cunningham's latest SIP proposal around legacy support for V1 Plutus scripts. So these scripts are taking up a lot of the block sizes. If we can get legacy support for reference inputs and reference scripts, if you don't know what they are, I'll put links down below for you guys so you can learn a little bit more about what that is. But that will dramatically reduce the footprint of V1 scripts, allowing for a lot more transactions to be packed into those blocks and scale up Cardano quite dramatically. So um, uh, that's something I'm really looking forward to more than Hydra itself. IOG launched Lace, a light wallet and browser extension for Cardano. So far, the Lace wallet has seen 10,000 downloads. The Cardano Foundation also released its first ever inaugural report, revealing a whole bunch of things, including the nonprofit's balance sheet. More on that in a bit too. In May, IOG hired another blockchain veteran to work on its midnight sidechain and also launched a smart contract developer toolkit called Marlow on the blockchain. Those of you who watched our video about the top Cardano projects will know that it's apparently difficult to build on Cardano. In June, building on Cardano got even more difficult, but for a different reason. More the different. SEC named ADA as a right. security in its lawsuits against Coinbase. Right. Before, uh, I don't know uh, if he's going to correct uh, anything in regards to developing a Cardano, but um, uh, if anything, Cardano development is so much easier now. Uh, so he probably doesn't know about some of these DSLs, domain specific languages that are available now. So you can write Cardano smart contracts in TypeScript, in Python, and there's also Aiken and Helios, which are very similar to C programming. So if you're familiar with other programming languages that are out there now, picking up one of these DSLs will make Cardano development so much easier for you. And we're seeing the DeFi ecosystem right now absolutely booming protocol after protocol launching. Uh, I remember when I was covering all this news in December, it was literally every couple of days, something was launching, uh, something going on testnet, whatever it is, because of programs like Aiken. If you're interested in developing on Cardano, skip everything out there already and just Google search how to develop with Aiken. Links down below for you guys so you have a better understanding of Aiken and know where to start when developing smart contracts for Cardano. The SEC named ADA as a security in its lawsuits against Coinbase and Binance. In plain English, by this action, the SEC considers ADA to be an unregistered stock in a company. Therefore, it wants it to be delisted from US crypto exchanges. Right, so really interesting one there. And uh, the, the way I see things now at the moment is the decentralization and uh, the removal of IOG uh, from the picture here, I think is a really key thing. And there's a lot of uh, development in regards to that at the moment with Cardano's governance layer coming into play, Voltaire era kicking in and the uh, Intersect uh, members-based organization coming into play this year as well. So with more of that coming into play, uh, the Cardano blockchain will be more so in the hands of the Cardano community itself and IOG can be removed from the picture. So it shouldn't fall into some of those categories of the Howey test. Since now ADA itself, the blockchain is in the hands of the community. It's the people that are building and using the blockchain itself, not a third party company that is building it. And then we're profiting off their success. In the weeks that followed, some US exchanges, including Robinhood and Revolut, did actually delist ADA. As you can imagine, this caused ADA's price to plummet and elicited a response from IOG and other large entities in the Cardano community, who obviously argued that ADA is not a security. Cardano's regulatory woes continued in July when Emergo announced that it would be putting a pause on its upcoming USDA stablecoin and its Anzans initiative. Put simply, Anzans was basically going to be a huge DeFi ecosystem on Cardano that could interact with the traditional financial system. So just to put things in perspective, so you have a better understanding of what was happening at that time. So with USDA, they were potentially using SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, as a custodian for their US dollar. 
backing their USDA. Now, if Emergo was to launch USDA at that time when Silicon Valley Bank went under, that would have completely crippled USDA on launch. Now, USDC, Circle's uh, stablecoin, they did have exposure with SVB as well, but they're such a huge ecosystem. And I had a conversation with someone about this. Uh, USDC losing the amount of USD within Silicon Valley Bank was just whatever. <laughs> we can recover from this really easily. It, it doesn't really matter. But if... USDA, if Emergo were using Silicon Valley Bank for their launch and had 80% of their holdings within it, it would have completely wiped out the stablecoin at that point in time. So they were very, very cautious with what they were doing and did not launch because of the economic environment and everything that was happening. So they would hopefully return to this at a later date when the market conditions are better and there's a better regulatory environment around USD stablecoins in the United States. So not a good time to launch a stablecoin. Now, USDA also wanted to comply with all of the states in the US. So that's a bit more of a hurdle, a lot more work to do uh, in comparison to Mahen. Mahen is the other stablecoin alternative in the United States, which should be launching fairly soon. They're going by the state by state approach and they have 19 states where you can have USDM, their version of the USD stablecoin for Cardano. And uh, if you're in one of those 19 states, you'll be able to mint and create or burn those those uh, stable coins legally in those states. So they've gone for a fragmented approach as opposed to an all-encompassing approach. And the launch of Mithril. Now, without getting too technical, Mithril increased the speed at which Cardano nodes can communicate and simultaneously made it easier for developers to build dApps, a key theme for Cardano in 2023. In August, now, the, the really cool thing for me as a state pool operator, Mithril allowed me to sync the Cardano blockchain within a couple of hours as opposed to 24 hours, uh, which it previously took. So uh, being able to sync and fire up new nodes really quickly was highly beneficial. So uh, developers that are relying on something like that, uh, are relying on a node, they can use Mithril to sync and then start developing straight away. So it makes things a lot easier. But there's also software as a service providers such as Dmeter, which allow you to fire up a Cardano node within a few seconds and you can start developing on that as well. So there's some really cool tools out there now. First, the Cardano Foundation announced the launch of a new Explorer. And this was more significant than you might think because the original Explorer from the Foundation had limited information about things like accounts and balances. The new Explorer contains all of this information and more. In September, Okay, um, now the, the big thing about the Explorer, now I don't think the Kadan Foundation had a Explorer before, he might be mentioning uh, IG's Explorer, but the Foundation had to put out an Explorer where they could support enterprises and institutions. So this was the Explorer for those people uh, and entities that needed support. So uh, you can imagine that there's, there's quite a few explorers out there in the community that are community built, which are really good. Cardano Scan is a really good one with a really good UI and UX. Now, uh, they aren't in particular providing support for transactions for hedge funds or anything like that. So the Cardano Foundation needed to create one that was official and that they could actually use to support those type of entities. Mergo announced that it would be investing heavily into Cardano's ecosystem to address 21 areas that are, quote, missing. Oddly enough, its CEO didn't specify what these 21 areas were, but Cointelegraph noted that they include decentralized digital ID and more sidechain development. I, I don't remember any of that. <laughs> I don't hear a lot of the Mergo uh, announcements, unfortunately. In October, Emergo made the headlines again when it partnered with MinSwap, one of Cardano's largest DeFi protocols. Emergo also launched a social media app for ADA enthusiasts called Cardano Spot. This foreshadows the project's foray into decentralized social media, which could be a big narrative. Um, well, Cardano Spot is a uh, it, it's, it's an initiative from Amergo. Amergo is a, a commercial entity. It's uh, they're, they're trying to build uh, a commercial arm for uh, the marketing and everything else around it. So it's uh, 
I don't see the big deal. Um, Kadana Spot's been sponsoring a lot of Kadana events um, and uh, initiatives, so it's it's been it's been good. Um, so I don't see a problem there. More about that in the description. I digress. Now, another two Cardano announcements came from IOG in October. The first was that IOG had hired Sean Ford as the CEO of its upcoming stablecoin startup. If the name sounds familiar, that's because Sean worked at Algorand for five years and was one of the de facto faces of that project. Anyways, the second announcement from IOG was that the company... I haven't heard much uh, since that announcement, um, so uh, it'd be interesting to look into it and see if anything's gone further from that. The company had acquired the NAMI wallet. For those unfamiliar, NAMI is one of the most... I think it's pronounced NAMI. ...popular browser extensions in Cardano's ecosystem. Charles revealed... Yeah, that, that was actually quite a big deal because uh, a NAMI wallet... Because of its ease of use, its uh, UI and simplicity, a lot of people did pick it up and a lot of people do use it. So having IOG take that one over uh, and start supporting it as an open source project, I thought was a really big deal. Um, it needs a lot of work. Um, it needs UI improvements. Um, but I'd love to see uh, more development on that um, and a lot more updates uh, as soon as possible. It really needs a lot of work in an interview that the wallet was about to shut down before they bought it. Also interesting. Anyhow, in November, Emergo announced that its Yoroi wallet had added a swap functionality courtesy of MuesliSwap, another big dex on Cardano. Emergo also added a fiat on-ramp for Yoroi thanks to a partnership with Banksa. It goes without saying that this will make Cardano's ecosystem more accessible. Yeah, those those updates for Yoroi were really good. And I know a lot of users still use Yoroi. Now, if you are using Yoroi still, there's about another seven or eight really good wallets in the Cardano ecosystem. Uh, Nami being one of my favorites, but probably the most popular is Eternal or Vespa. They are by far some of the best UI UX um, and feature rich wallets for Cardano. If you're not using any either of those two, uh, please check out Vespa, links down below for you guys, and then check out Eternal for desktop, which, which is my main uh, wallet for uh, the PC desktop. I absolutely love those two wallets. Please check them out. Um, if it's your first time ever using Cardano, they're my first entry points. They're the wallets that I tell people to start using. They also have uh, Fiat on-ramps and swaps built into the wallets too. Uh, so absolutely brilliant wallets. Uh, not to take the limelight away from Uroi and the developments that they're doing. They're doing a lot of work at the moment to try and improve the wallet and take it to the next level. So uh, good on Emergo and Uroi for working on Uroi still. Then, in December, Cardano launched Cardano Ballot, a governance dashboard for the entire Cardano ecosystem, and even held its first official on-chain vote. In a presentation, one of the people working on it revealed that the vote was non-binding, but nonetheless a step forward for Cardano's go Yeah, it was uh, just a temperature check. We we're just uh, seeing if the uh, voting mechanisms work, uh, see how many people participate in the vote itself. Uh, from the tally, I think only about 700 or so wallets participated in that vote. Very, very low participation. So if there's anything to work on, it's uh, enabling uh, hardware wallet support, which it didn't allow for yet, but that's on the ledger side of things. So we need to be able to support uh, ledger hardware wallets for um, message signing. But then also more importantly, increase the participation of voting. Uh, probably a lot of people saw absolutely no point of voting for that once, just a temperature check. It's like, uh, should we continue developing governance on Cardano? Sure, why not? Let's vote yes. Why would anyone vote no for that? Governance. The result of all these updates, announcements, and developments can be clearly seen in ADA's price. As you can see, ADA appears to have hit its low for this cycle in June, when it was labeled as a security by the SEC. Now, I'll skip ahead a lot of this because it's not quite relevant to the corrections I want to make or comments I like to make in this video. Uh, so if you want to watch the whole thing, links down below for you guys. On the supply side, ADA's supply has increased by around 900 million over the last year, which only works out to around $300 million of sell pressure, assuming that ADA was in fact sold. 
That's not much sell pressure in the grand scheme of things, but it's clear that someone somewhere was selling. As with our last Cardano update, it seems that the culprits in this case could be the three entities behind Cardano, IOG, Emergo, and the Cardano Foundation. All three appear to be funded by sales of ADA. Case in point, the Cardano... Now, that's, uh, that's probably true. Uh, they all have a lot of ADA in the early days through the Genesis, and they have stake pools. They stake their ADA, they sell it in regards to being able to fund and pay for developers. Uh, it's just the way it is. Uh, other foundations uh, mint tokens and sell it, so or give it out to the ecosystem, and they in turn sell it for fiat, so they can pay for developers and marketing and etc. All those things. Pay for the bills. So how, how else are you going to pay it? You can't pay for it in ADA at the moment. Dino Foundation's first annual report revealed that most of its treasury consists of ADA. And, and when you consider the fact that it's been increasing its headcount, it's safe to assume that its expenses have also increased. Indeed, the annual report in 2022 admitted this was the case. When you consider that Emergo and... Uh, the, I'd just like to preference that the foundation have been hiring more people, a lot of really good developers as well. Hence, they've been releasing so many things at the moment. Everything from courses, uh, learning material, more dApps, more uh, block explorers, more everything. It, like, it's, uh, I've covered it in the news updates in November and December. If you want to check them out and see what the foundation's been up to, they've been extremely busy in regards to delivering and uh, putting things out there for the community. The IOG have likewise been spending lots of money on development and hiring. It suggests that most of ADA's sell pressure may indeed have been coming from these three entities. Now, don't get me wrong, this development is bullish for ADA in the long term, but in the short term it's bearish. And this is especially because the demand side of the equation isn't looking that robust. Downloads of the Namey browser extension wallet have remained the same. The number of wallets holding ADA has only increased slightly, and the most held native Okay, I, I wouldn't use the downloads of NAMI as a, a metric there. Um, NAMI probably is being, uh, yeah, yeah, people aren't downloading NAMI. Uh, like I mentioned before, Eternal and Vespa are the wallets to look for. And they don't appear yeah, as, a, uh, Vespa isn't a browser extension, it's a mobile app only. So you gotta check that out. Um, look it up in the Google Play or the iTunes store, you'll be able to find it there. Asset is the Hosky meme coin with less than 100,000 holders. In truth, the only on, meme coin that? increase the extension wallet have remained the same. The number of wallets holding ADA has only increased slightly, and the most held native asset is the Hosky meme coin with less than 100,000 holders. Uh, could be true. Uh, I'll probably have to look up those stats on chain, but I know a lot of the meme coins in 2023 had been exploding. Snack is hugely popular. It's uh, brought in more users from different ecosystems uh, and different uh, uh, people looking for opportunities. So uh, I I'm surprised that Snack hasn't overtaken it yet. I know the market cap for Snack is extremely high at the moment. It's uh, continuously growing with more people playing around with it. So um, I have to look into that and verify those details around uh, token distribution and token holders. In truth, the only demand metric on Cardano that's been flashing a bullish signal is the total value locked on its DeFi protocols. But this rise is likely due mainly to the increase in ADA's price over the last few months. Okay, I, I did see people comment about this one as well. Now, a uh, guy looked up the uh, TVL in USD. Um, you need to look at it also in TVL as how much ADA is being put into the ecosystem because you have to remember that Cardano doesn't have a native stable coin. It does have Jed, but the uptake of that has not been as much as we would have liked to see because yeah, it's really capital inefficient. You have to use so much ADA to actually mint Jed. So um, in this case, you need to look at ADA as the uh, value that's in terms of TVL. And let me just bring that up for you. So if we have a look here, yes, uh, USD TVL is uh, nice. It looks high. Um, you can see it decrease here at the moment as well. Price is dropping a little bit since the new year. But if we look at this in terms of ADA itself, people are 
putting in a lot of value, a lot of assets into uh, the ecosystem using ADA. So here, if I s let me switch back to USD. This drop in price here, this drop in price of uh, amount of value here, you can see that drop dropping off in the new year here. You don't see that with the amount of ADA being locked into the ecosystem. It's pretty much stable um, at the moment where it is. So as new protocols launch, more ADA is dripped into the ecosystem, into smart contracts, etc. Um, and I have to say, a lot of the smart contracts uh, from the, some of the new protocols aren't yet added into the ecosystem yet either. So uh, a couple of them I, I know uh, that are growing quite, uh, uh, quite well at the moment. They don't have their TVLs added in. So there, there's a bit missing as well. But as you can see, if you look at this since the beginning of 2023, that's been a steady increase with a couple of uh, bigger increases. You don't see dramatic drops. Now, if we compare that to Ethereum, for example, uh, we since the beginning of 2023, we don't see that same kind of pattern of growth. We don't see uh, the growth of the ecosystem. Let me just get this right. We don't see their DeFi ecosystem growing on a continuous basis based on ETH. So there we go. So this is uh, the Ethereum ecosystem based on ETH. We don't see their TVL of assets being locked in the ecosystem growing at all. So uh, you, you see it diminish since the beginning of 2023 and then pretty much stabilize. So people are either leaving their assets where it is and looking elsewhere for opportunities. And let's go, let's go back to Cardano. And you can see here with Cardano, it's clearly continuously growing with more DeFi plays, more uh, more protocols coming into uh, the ecosystem as well. And with the way that smart contracts work, it's just more appealing to put assets and liquidity into smart contracts that aren't open to vulnerabilities and hacks. If I was to put in a million dollars of assets onto a protocol, I'd rather put it somewhere where I know it won't be completely drained in six months time. Uh, I could be just active. I could just be holding those assets in that smart contract and trying to earn some uh, rewards or staking, whatever it is. And then to find out that it's uh, been completely drained from some sort of vulnerability or hack, that is just not something I want. And that's why I'm in the Cardano ecosystem. I want that high level of security in those smart contracts to avoid those type of hacks. It could also be because only a few of Cardano's DeFi protocols were being tracked before. The silver lining is that these supply and demand dynamics haven't been influencing ADA's price too much over the last few months. As I just mentioned, interest rates, namely long-term interest rates, appear to have been playing a much more significant role, and these interest rates will likely continue to decline. What this means is that ADA could rally along with the rest of the crypto market, regardless of its supply and demand dynamics. As with most cryptos, the increase in ADA's price will result in some percentage of speculators becoming users. This will improve its demand-side dynamics and further increase its price. Whether ADA will hit new all-time highs this year ultimately depends on its upcoming milestones. As some of you will know, Cardano has a roadmap which consists of five stages. It's currently between stage four, Basho, which focuses on scalability, and stage five, Voltaire, which focuses on governance. Let me just go back a little bit there. Now I'll probably add, where are we really at? Um, I'd say we're still improving the smart contracts with the DSLs, the domain spe specific languages that I was talking about. Um, all of that's still improving and it's still growing. Uh, so we're still technically uh, working on the smart contract layer and improving that to make that whole thing uh, better. Um, scaling, scaling is still being worked on as well. So input endorses and all sorts of other things, block size increases, uh, decrease of block times, uh, optimization of the blocks as well. That's all still being worked on. It's a continuous process. It's it's never ending thing. And yes, we are just entering the Voltaire era. It's been worked on for the last um, year or so with the uh, SIP 1694. So that is in play with a uh, uh, Intersect MBO. Uh, let's continue this video. Cardano's upcoming milestones are discussed and implemented using Cardano Improvement Proposals or CIPs. 
The CIP that's been front and centre over the last year is CIP 1694, which relates to on-chain governance and therefore falls under the Voltaire umbrella. Remember the first Cardano ballot vote from earlier? Well, it was about whether CIP 1694 should be implemented. Not surprisingly, it passed with 99% of participating ADA voting in favour. According to Emergo, the comp Yeah, so I'll just go back to that. I did comment on this a little bit earlier, but you can see the participation numbers here, 771 participants voting for this. So that needs to be definitely worked on to, to get that uh, number up and uh, have that high level participation to really show that uh, Cardano is uh, decentralized and the community is getting involved in the future of Cardano itself. And of participating ADA voting in favor. According to Emergo, the components of CIP 1694 will be implemented with the Chang hard fork sometime early this year. This begs the question of what CIP 1694 entails. Well, the short answer is that it's very difficult to give a short answer, so we'll leave a link to an infographic about it in the description if you're interested. The TLDR is that it implements a complex governance architecture to spend ADA from the community treasury. But back to Emergo. Now, the Chang hard fork was... So it's a little bit more than just the uh, ADA being spent in the treasury. It's everything around governing the protocol itself, decisions around the blockchain, protocol and parameter changes as well. So all these things that uh, affect all the users in the ecosystem, we are finally having an opportunity to be able to vote and have our say and direct the direction of the Cardano blockchain itself other than rather than having IOG or the Cardano Foundation or Emergo having their influence, we as a community can actually make those decisions, put proposals forward, make those decisions and implement them on chain. So not just spending the ADA, it's all about governing the blockchain and the direction of the project itself. Noted in the company's own roadmap for 2024, which it released late last year. And this roadmap includes six additional milestones. The first is further evolving Cardano's community governance. CIP 1694 is just the first step, so-called minimum viable governance. The second milestone relates to another big crypto narrative, and that's tokenized real-world assets on Cardano. The third milestone relates to Cardano's 2023 focus, and that's bringing in more third-party dApp developers. From what we've seen, most Cardano dApps were funded in-house, so to speak. The fourth milestone relates to something that Cardano has been seriously lacking, and that's more interoperability with other cryptocurrency blockchains. During his presentation at the Cardano Summit in Dubai last year, Charles seemed to say that Midnight would be the key to Cardano's interoperability. The fifth milestone involves creating more Cardano-related resources for the community. Emergo notes that it will focus on increasing the adoption of its aforementioned Cardano Spot app, which has apparently seen over 26,000 downloads already. Not too shabby. The final milestone mentioned by Emergo involves adding new features and functionalities to its Yoroi wallet, which is technically the most downloaded browser extension for Cardano, though apparently not supported by all Cardano dApps. Anyway, so far, Emergo... Yeah, yeah, that's kind of true. It's, uh, I, I, I do believe that is because uh, uh, Uroi did lag behind in a lot of the development uh, for dApp support in the early days. So when uh, there wasn't the uh, required integrations and required updates for Uroi, all these other wallets came into the ecosystem and filled that gap. Hence, NAMI appeared, hence Eternal appeared. We needed good, robust wallets that worked with the dApps that were launching back in 2021. Uh, so hence, they grew dramatically and Uroi fell to the, the wayside. So uh, it's good to see, like I mentioned before, Uroi picking things up and integrating and developing more and uh, putting more features in to be better supporting the Cardano ecosystem. Ergo seems to be on the right track there. Now, there is one more Cardano milestone that we came across during our research, and it's arguably the most important of them all. 
During that Cardano summit in Dubai, a project called Mehen announced it would be launching Cardano's first fiat-backed stablecoin called USDM in 2023. USDM is presumably intended to be the plan B after Emergo's USDA stablecoin, which was supposed to be Cardano's first fiat-backed stable. Lo and behold, well, it's 2024 and USDM has yet to launch. This could be the reason why IOG is working on its own fiat-backed stablecoin as the de facto plan C. All we're wondering is why the USDT or USDC stablecoins haven't launched on Cardano. After all, stablecoins are the backbone for use cases like DeFi and even NFTs. Without liquid fiat stablecoins, it's very difficult to grow your ecosystem of dApps, particularly when your competitors' dApps have no shortage of them. This brings me to the challenges. Okay, so <laughs> I did mention a little bit earlier about USDM. Uh, to give you an update, I, I did do a big news update around USDM as well. Uh, I'll put links to it in the show notes so you can find out a little bit more about where they're up to. They had a couple of interesting opportunities in regards to adding more features into USDM's deployment. So they had a little bit more work to do and now it's going through the audit from the last read uh, last update that i saw they're very close to being able to launch now uh, the audit's been done by the sunday swap labs team so hopefully when that is across the line and everything's checked we can see that all launch it is really really exciting to see that one come into play now the comment about usdt and usdc that's an interesting one and from what i know from the foundation uh the usdc team uh, required a lot of funding to be integrated into cardano one of the primary features that it also needed was being able to freeze assets. I just saw the other day on uh, Instagram that Tether was working with the United States government to be able to freeze assets and they just froze uh, a massive amount of Tether. I can't remember where it was from. Uh, now that isn't possible in Cardano. You can't freeze assets. With EVM chains, you're actually in interacting with the smart contract of that particular stable coin. So your wallet is interacting with the smart contract and then that will say that you have X amount of USDC, USDT in your wallet. Now with Cardano, all those assets are native to the chain. So it's an actual token that can move around. It's not controlled by a smart contract. It's originally there. Uh, this is a smart contract that can be used to mint the assets but you don't need a smart contract to control a native asset on Cardano. And this is one of the reasons why USDC and USDT aren't on the Cardano blockchain. They need that requirement to be able to freeze those assets. What does that mean? Maybe a lot of users will be coming over to Cardano because their stablecoin assets won't be frozen. Really interesting. Now, will that comply with government regulations? That's another thing. Um, will the government regulations uh, exchanges be able to freeze assets when they uh, hit those centralized points? Yeah, they'll be able to. So if you're exiting on Binance, if you're exiting on Coinbase or whatever it is, those uh, entities will be able to freeze those assets when they come into those particular addresses. But the USDM or USDA stablecoin or JED or whatever you happen to be using on Cardano, they can't be frozen. You have free reign over those and full control over them very decentralized compared to the centralized uh, alternatives out there. It's that Cardano faces. The first challenge is regulation. Now, to bring you up to speed, the SEC considers a crypto to be a security if there is a third party or group of third parties that you can point to as creating an expectation of profit from investing in the coin or token in question. Well, and this is why, uh, uh, before Guy continues, this is why that decentralization, that governance on Cardano is so important because it puts the onus on the community itself, takes IOG out of the picture, takes Charles out of the picture. Um, I personally can't wait until the point when IOG can be removed from Cardano. Uh, it means that the community, it means that the blockchain itself has matured to a point where it can take things over. In the case of ADA, there's no denying that the expectation of profit is coming from the actions of the Cardano Foundation, IOG, and Emergo. Not only that, but Charles confirmed in an October tweet that the three entities hold the genesis keys to the Cardano blockchain. They technically have control of it. 
explain why ADA was delisted by some US exchanges, while other cryptos the SEC referred to as securities were not. Some of you might recall that eToro had delisted ADA way back in November 2021 due to unspecified regulatory concerns. In retrospect, this was a warning of things to come. From our perspective, it appears that the Cardano Foundation, IOG, and Emergo have all been rushing to completely decentralize Cardano as quickly as possible by introducing on-chain governance. This will presumably involve destroying the Genesis keys held by these entities and leaving things up to ADA holders. The good news is that it's going pretty well, and it will be good for Cardano in the long term. With a bit of luck, it may even be enough to shake the regulators off their backs. The bad news is that it seems to have shifted focus away from other important factors that increase Cardano's adoption, such as scaling. And this ties into the second challenge that Cardano faces, and that's adoption. As most now, uh, in relation to the scaling side of things, I think a lot of the development has gone into the hands of the community. Uh, the community has, I've seen tweets like, uh, you know, <laughs> where are these tools that we're expecting? Our uh, stuff it, we'll build it ourselves. And, you know, that's the type of attitude that's been taken uh, from a lot of developers out there. Let's, we, we can't wait for uh, IOG or uh, someone else to build it for us. We're just going to roll up our sleeves and build it ourselves. So um, we're seeing a lot of that at the moment. Uh, we have seen a lot of that in 2023. So we're going to see a lot more of it in 2024 as uh, IOG's works on what they need to work on. I'm um, presuming a lot more on the midnight side of things uh, as opposed to uh, the Kadana side of things. Uh, and then we'll see uh, where things go from there. Most of you will know Cardano is famous for its research-based approach. It's opted to move slowly and make sure everything works, whereas other crypto projects, such as Ethereum, have moved fast and broken things. Now, there's no question that this approach has been a double-edged sword for Cardano, so much so that Charles admitted in an April interview that they, quote, bet on the wrong technology. In November, the CEO of the Cardano Foundation... Yeah, I, I don't remember that one, uh, but uh, a, a lot of people, I think, would agree with me. The slow and steady approach is a good approach. Um, I do prefer it. Uh, what's the point of breaking things, having a blockchain go down, or having smart contracts completely liquidate my life savings? Why? Why, why would I want that? Also said the academic approach was causing delays. The result is that Cardano is starting to fall behind other crypto projects in terms of adoption, and it seems that the regulators are simultaneously starting to... What is this? Cord Cordano? Cordano? <laughs> what on earth? Um, catch up. Now, in our opinion, Cardano needs a killer dap or to align with some sort of narrative that will reinvigorate its organic adoption. As you might have gathered, we think that Emergo's Cardano Spot app could be a blessing in disguise. If... Really? Okay. Uh, give, give Guy, I, guy I, I know... You cover a huge amount of things, so you, you probably don't know all the intricacies and all these dApps that are building and launching on Cardano. I think Cardano's killer app is AXO, A-X-O. That is by far the most complex DeFi protocol dApp that I've ever seen anywhere. To be able to create your own trading algorithms and have that on chain, all on chain, and create them in a graphical interface where you don't need to program anything. You can just drag and drop your functions in and build your uh, build your DCA, build your um, moving average algorithms, uh, buy sell points, whatever it is. I don't even understand half this trading stuff, but being able to do that all within a DAP and have it completely decentralized, I think is mind-bogglingly amazing and the people that i've spoken to vcs even uh said they've never seen anything like this before this will be the killer dap in DeFi, not just cardano if cardano can turn the app into a social media dap this alone could be enough to propel it back into the spotlight now fortunately so. or unfortunately though it seems cardano is still very focused on real world DeFi. 
And this pertains to Cardano's third challenge, and that's development. In case you haven't noticed, it seems that most of Cardano's development is being funded by the Cardano Foundation, IOG, and Emergo. Never mind the fact that this creates more issues on the regulatory front. The bigger issue, however, is that Cardano has, for some reason... Well, I, I would argue with that. Um, I wouldn't say, if the, is the foundation paying for anyone? No. Is IOG paying any of the dApps? Maybe C Fund, but, you know, they lost a lot of money in dApps and, like, Adana, that rugged. Um, and Amerigo, uh, they're, they're, they've got a VC fund, but they, they're not even investing in a lot of the dApps or any of the dApps in the Cardano ecosystem. Uh, probably a good thing. Um, a lot of the funding that the, the dApps have received was from Project Catalyst, the Cardano's treasury, and was voted for by the Cardano community. No one's funding it directly from the foundation. That is one thing the foundation does not do. People have complained about it. People have wanted the foundation to uh, pay for dApps and pay for development. They just don't. And I can kind of see why, uh, from what Guy's commenting here, I can I kind of see why they don't now. Interesting. Okay, let's go on with this. ...been arguably unsuccessful in integrating with the rest of the crypto ecosystem, be it with stablecoins or otherwise. Let me remind you that Namey, the most popular browser extension wallet for dApps, was literally going to close its doors. That is very concerning. What it fundamentally suggests... I don't know about that. Nami is an open source wallet. Anyone can contribute to it. Um, Alessandro is working on a lot of different other things, but anyone else could have just picked up the wallet and started developing on it. Um, it's not a company. It's just a wallet. It's a piece of software that anyone can pick up. Uh, the repos are all uh, open source. You can do whatever you want with it. Uh, Alessandro just held the keys to deploy it on the uh, Google Play Store to uh, be able to download, or Google Chrome Store, I should say, to be able to download and install it is that hardcore developers in Cardano's ecosystem are becoming frustrated with the direction it's headed. Look no further than Meld and Coty for evidence of this. These were two of the most... Okay, I wouldn't exactly call them hardcore developers in the Cardano ecosystem. Coty never really uh, ventured deep into the Cardano ecosystem. They, they, they built Jed, yeah, I can understand that. They, they built that protocol, but they haven't built anything else um, and meld i'd kind of argue if they ever built anything on cardano at all um so uh yeah okay let's continue there's promising projects in cardano's ecosystem but they seem to be switching chains and yes we know that coty technically has its own blockchain but it doesn't change the fact that the jed issuer is now looking to build a layer two on ethereum not cardano in sum, then, Cardano faces an uphill battle over the next 12 months. While ADA's price is likely to do well regardless, due to broader macro conditions, Cardano still faces more... Uh, back to the uh, developer, the hardcore developer uh, comment that um, a guy just mentioned. Uh, a lot of the hardcore developers are building in, a, like I said, Aiken. Uh, if, if you're a developer in the... If you're a dApp developer and you want to tap into Cardano, just Google Aiken, learn how to use it. It is far easier than anything that already exists on Cardano. I wrote a smart contract in Aiken. I did it for fun. I just did an online tutorial. Didn't take me long at all. And the whole process of setting up a development environment uh, took less than 10 minutes. It is so easy now to develop on Cardano compared to what it was before. Highly invite anyone that's interested to look those things up. Links down below in the show notes for you. What fundamental challenges that need to be addressed ASAP if the project wants to remain competitive with its peers? Before you say FUD, know that we believe that Cardano could have incredible potential. You'll recall that some team members here hold ADA in their personal crypto portfolios. We believe that Cardano will overcome these challenges eventually. And yes, ADA... Yes, you, you hold ADA, but do you hold any Cardano native assets? Do you go deeper than just ADA? Have you seen some of these protocols and things that are building on ADA? They're amazing. They're really cool. It ...could go on to cement its place as one of the largest cryptocurrencies by market cap. We just hope that this happens before it's too late. 
And that's all for today's video, folks. So if you found it informative, Okay, so overall, just a few comments and corrections there in regards to this video. Now, I know a lot of people uh, on Twitter uh, left a lot of comments about this as well. And I, I know um, some people even went to uh, Coin Bureau's Discord to try and uh, correct some of these things. So hopefully uh, the guys here can do a brand new update and uh, more regular ones because the ecosystem constantly changes. I really struggle to keep up doing these Cardano updates. Uh, but I do I try. I really, really do try. Uh, let's just have a look at some of these comments down here as well. I, th I thought some of these are quite interesting. I like Ada for two reasons. It leverages functional programming language and the technology is based on meticulous peer-reviewed papers. If you want to give smart contracts the responsibility of handling assets worth billions of dollars, then you want the code to be provable, correct, and the only way you are going to have a chance of proving correctness of your code is that if it is written in functional language. Developers may hate it because they are trained in procedural programming, uh, but it is rarely their money on the line, so they will just have to learn. Uh, I did object-oriented programming, uh, switching over to functional programming was a little bit of a mind bender, but you know, I got there in the end. Uh, so I do completely agree that if you are looking at real world assets, tokenizing homes, tokenizing uh, diamonds, jewelry, commodities, assets, whatever it is, which a lot of Cardano projects are doing at the moment, you don't want that to stuff up. You, do, you want that to be as accurate as possible and unhackable so that you can tokenize those assets securely. What else we got here? The reason that USDC and USDT have not gone to Cardano is because of its unique security feature that makes it impossible to, for regulators to freeze and seize any token built on Cardano. Yes, I mentioned that before. This makes JED and other stable coins on Cardano more valuable than other stable coins on other chains. No, regula re no regulator can steal from you if your value is held on ADA chain. Completely true. I just wonder what people are saying about this. Jet has failed as a stable coin. No one can, um, can maintain. Yeah. I now let me just comment on this one here. Uh, Jed, yeah, it's a disappointing where Jed is at the moment. Um, the the capital efficiency of Jed is really really poor. The amount of ADA that you have to use to mint Jed is just really really high. And with the price of ADA going up again, uh, for people that are holding ADA, why would you put it into an asset where it's not appreciating because the price of ADA is going up instead of you're locking it in at a certain price into USD um, stablecoin? Uh, so that's why it hasn't had that massive uptake. Now, if Jed launched earlier, more so in that bear market as things were going down, we may have seen a completely different market. But um, they launched in January of 2023 as opposed to mid mid 2023 or earlier so hence um uh, we're, we're seeing jed where it is now now uh, what other comments have we got here uh no uh, there was no outage all transactions are still processed uh at that time by the remainder 50 percent of the nodes operating cardano never had shut down yes that is totally correct i think it was uh, just a few seconds of downtime uh, ADA is hands down's most professional crypto existing. Yeah, yeah, I kind of agree with that. If DeFi Llama included ADA liquid staking, like it does for all, all other proof of stake chains, it would be second in terms of TVL right now behind ETH. Also, if you look at TVL in terms of ADA locked, this has been consistently growing and therefore nothing to do with the price going up. The reason USDC isn't on good. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is uh, stuff that I've uh, commented on before. Let me so good to see the comments were pretty much in line with what I was saying as well. Now, if you guys have any corrections for Guy's video, please put them down in the comments down below. I'll put them in future video updates as well. I think I'll spend a lot of this year, 2024, uh, going over other YouTubers and other bits of disinformation, FUD and all those things that are out there and correcting people where they need to be corrected. I don't ever do this kind of thing, but I, th I think it's time and it needs to be done so that uh, people get the right information. And I saw another one just recently about Cardano transactions. And I'll be going through that in a moment too. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, click subscribe, click that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano.